welcome back to Little People Big Dreams. And I'm Laurie. Thank you so much for coming back to join me again. So, what amazing historical figure are we gonna learn about today? Well, first of all, I'm gonna wish all my dreamers a happy International Darwin Day! Woo! Woo! Well, today is a holiday that specially celebrates the naturalist and geologist Charles Darwin. Mm -hmm. And it's a very important day to bring together and celebrate all the contribution Darwin has brought to science for us. So, you heard the name. And as you guessed it, my dreamers, my very, very smart dreamers, we are talking about Charles Darwin today. So who is Charles Darwin, you ask? Born into a family of scientists, Charles spent much of his childhood wandering the countryside, collecting seeds, flowers, and insects. His fascination with nature led him abroad the HMS Beagle, where he took a journey that would not only change his own life, but scientific thinking forever. All the way till today. That's right. Oh my goodness, this sounds so exciting. So just like Charles Darwin, on the HMS Beagle, let's sail away to learn all about him. Let's go. Dreams, Charles Darwin, written by Maria Isabel Sanchez Vergara, illustrated by Mark Hoffman. Little Charles lived with his family in Shrewsbury, England, at a time when people didn't know much about the secret life of nature. Had worms always crawled on the ground? He wanted to find out. Yes, little Charles was a very, very curious child. Look at the little worm. Hmm, had they always crawled on the ground? Well, let's go see what he found out. Back then, many teachers told their students that animals and plants had appeared on Earth all at once, in the blink of an eye. <laughs> Could this be possible? Hmm. Somehow, Charles was not very convinced by his teacher. Look at little Charles. He's thinking what his teacher was telling him was maybe just a little bit different than what he had thought. Questioning things was a natural for the Darwins. They were a family of scientists who thought outside of the box. Charles' grandfather was a well-known plant expert and his father was a doctor who hoped his son might follow in his footsteps. Look, we have a portrait of Charles' grandfather who was a well-known plant expert. And on the other side, we have Charles' father who was a doctor who hoped that little Charles will become a doctor too. Hmm, well we'll see if little Charles wanted to become a doctor as well. Let's go see. Charles entered medical school, but he couldn't stand the sight of blood. Ugh. Oh no, he didn't like blood at all. So he switched subjects and continued to read and learn all about plants, animals, and nature. Oh, look at poor Charles in medical school. He fainted from looking at blood. I think many of you do not like to look at blood at all. So you are not alone. 
And little Charles, you see over here? It's okay. He still loved nature. He still loved insects and little animals. So he went on to study what nature was all about. One day, he received an invitation to join a scientific expedition to the coast of Africa, South America, and Australia. The HMS Beagle left port during Christmas in 1831. It was a chance for Charles to see the world and finally study new species. Oh my goodness! Look at this sight! All the people saying goodbye to Charles, who's no longer little but he's on an expedition for science to look and study different species let's see what happens next soon he started noticing how plants and animals changed from place to place in brazil he found the remains of an animal that lived thousands of years ago and was similar to other mammals he knew well Look right here. This is the remains of a mammal that was in Brazil and different plants. Plants that Charles started to see some similarities. Let's go find out what these similarities are. On the Galapagos Islands, he met dozens of families of finches. Yes, and also mockingbirds. Those who ate insects have pointed beaks, while those who love fruits have curved beaks. And Charles thought, what if these species share the same ancestors? That was what he wondered. Interesting. Look at all the different species that he was studying all over Galapagos Islands. What do you think? Let's go see. And after five years traveling the world, Charles began to realize that plant and animal species were not fixed. As everyone thought, he formed the idea that they had slowly changed to adapt to the place in which they lived. Oh my goodness, what a discovery that Charles had made. And when Charles was 28 years old, well, he penned one of the most shocking ideas of his time. You know what that was? It's that one species changes into another. It was the first step to put down on paper a revolutionary theory that explained how life on Earth works. Oh my goodness, look at Charles. He did not come up with this idea just right on the spot. No, he worked so hard on observing all the different species. Oh my goodness, what is next? Over time, all living beings eventually become new species. This process happens through tiny, tiny little changes over thousands and thousands of years. We call it evolution. And Charles had just discovered its secret mechanism. Oh my goodness! Look at the evolution of man. Charles Darwin, he has done it. He has explained it. How wonderful and how smart and how daring. Charles' discovery was called natural selection. Nature rewards those that adapt best to their environment. The fastest rabbit, the smartest fox, or the owl with the best eyesight will survive in the wild and live to make many more animals like them. Charles Darwin, after years and years of observation and testing, he had discovered whoever had the best traits to survival will survive. That's it. If they can adapt to the environment that they are in, they will survive. And that's what we call survival of the fittest. 
It took Charles almost a lifetime to collect all his ideas in a book called *On the Origins of Species*. It was one of the most important books ever written and a fascinating read for anyone who wanted to understand the secret life of nature. And since then, the latest discoveries in science are informed by Charles, the most important naturalist in history. The bold boy. You see, the bold boy who understood that knowledge takes more courage than ignorance, but the truth is always worth it. Look at little Charles, and now to the future scientist that his legacy has lasted long till today. Wow! From collecting plants, animals, and fossils, and filling many, 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 many. Woo! Giant stack of notebooks with observations, notes, and drawings, etc. Charles Darwin's diligent work over the years give us all a very great insight into the diversity of life on Earth and its origins, and also us as a species as well. What an inspirational and amazing naturalist, isn't he? From the curious little boy he was to discovering the secret life of nature. That's right. Knowledge takes more courage than ignorance, and little Charles knew that from when he was very little all the way till now. But you know what? He also knew that getting to the bottom of the truth was well worth it. So thank you so much to little Charles' dream of figuring out just how evolution worked. So that's why Charles Darwin is one of the most iconic, inspirational, and amazing scientists overall in history. Okay, my dreamers, dream on.